personal finance practice problem using Excel. Stock split versus stock dividend. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to it, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank sheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below. Example, practice blank, example, answer key. Let's look at it now. Information on the left, calculations on the right. We're getting a better understanding of what happens with stock splits and stock dividends by looking at the mock balance sheet of a corporation, focusing in on the equity side of things as we consider the split, as we consider the stock dividend. We wanna see what's gonna be happening with the equity side of things. We also, as investors, are gonna be concerned with what will happen to the stock price and possibly also what will be happening with any dilution in our earnings percentages which might not be so important if we have a very small amount of earning percent because remember stocks are similar to kind of like voting in a republic for example we have the capacity to vote for say the board of directors oftentimes but like one individual in a republic if we hold a small amount of stocks our voting power is quite small however if we own a significant amount of stocks like 10 percent or something like that we have significant voting power, which we're going to most likely be concerned with. If the company is going to be distributing more shares, we want to know what's going to happen to kind of to our voting power. That's another question that would also often come up. So the second tab is going to have some pre-formatted cells so you can work through the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The third tab is going to be a blank tab where we're going to be doing the Excel formatting. If you don't have any of this, that's okay because you could just open up a blank sheet and then format the entire worksheet. I would do that by selecting the triangle up top, right click in the selected area, go to the format cells, and then go to currency, uh, negative numbers bracketed and red, remove the dollar sign, remove the decimals. That's where I typically start. I'm not gonna hit okay because I've already done this. I'm just gonna X out of it. And then we do have a significant amount of data to enter on the left-hand side because we basically have the full balance sheet. But this is common to do in practice if you work in like an accounting office and it's really good practice just to enter the balance sheet because it makes you understand kind of the balancing process and use formulas to enter things like total assets, total liabilities, and then how you're going to get the total equity and the liabilities and equity. So it's really actually a good exercise to do and then make a skinny D column and then we're good to go. So just a quick recap on the balance sheet side of things, if we're looking at the company, assets represent what the company owns. Liabilities means they owe something to a third party like a bank, like a loan. And then the equity where we're focused, you could think of as in essence, the net assets, assets minus liabilities. From an accounting standpoint, we think of the assets as what the company has, and then who has claim to those assets, either third parties or the owner and liabilities. So the equity then represents if there was only like one owner, for example, if this was a sole proprietor, your total equity would represent the value of the company for that one owner, which in a corporation, we have to break out to multiple owners. But unlike a partnership, which which could have different ownership percents, we're going to break them out into standard units, which makes it a little bit more easy in many ways of shares. Now, you could have like preferred stock, which kind of muddies the water a bit, but we're basically thinking we're breaking them out into the common shares here. So if we think about our ownership in the company, in the equity, this is how it breaks out in this example. We've got the number of shares, 100,000, that we're gonna assume are outstanding. So that doesn't mean that 100,000 people own the company, but there's 100,000 shares out there we're gonna start off with and some people could own, for example, multiple shares. Oftentimes there's a par value. The par value is not the market value. It's an arbitrary kind of number that helps us to kind of value how many shares are out there. So if we use two as the par value and we can see, if we say the common stock is 200,000, we can easily then calculate the number of shares outstanding by taking the 200,000 divided by the par value, which is the number of shares. Whereas if you look at it as the issue price, then the issue price could change over time. So this is a way to get that common stock kind of a, a set value on the par value. And then the capital in excess of par 
is the dollar amount over and above the par value that was actually paid for the stock. So therefore these two amounts right here represent kind of the, the revenue generally that the, the company earned or the, the capital that was, was generated typically cash when they distributed the stock, mostly oftentimes from the initial public offering where when people invested in the stock, they actually paid the company and then it was recorded with an increase in equity and an increase in cash, right? And then other times when stocks is traded, it's on the secondary market and you're not purchasing it from the company, but from other people. And therefore there's not an impact on the balance sheet in that case. And then the retained earnings represents the earnings of the company that have accumulated over time, calculated on the income statement, which have rolled into the balance sheet here into the retained earnings, which have not yet been distributed in the form of dividends, dividends typically representing the distribution of the earnings of the company uh, back to the to the owner. So when you look at the equity, then these two sides of things, the common stock and the capital are kind of like the investments from the owners when they purchase the stock, the owner putting money into the company, basically generally, and then the retained earnings is the earnings of the company that has been accumulated over time, which has not yet been distributed to the owners in the form of dividends. And that gives us our total equity. And then we've got the, the total uh, liabilities and equity here, which is our, which is our balancing uh, concept. Okay, so now, like if you thought about this from a book value, then you would think, okay, well, if the total equity is this amount right here, the total equity divided by the number of shares outstanding, you've got your five something, right? Uh, or 494 book value kind of per share. So you'd be breaking your calculations out based on the number of shareholders out there and then figure out in how many shares you have those. That would be the concept of your calculation. Now the market price we're going to say is $12. That is determined by the market, right? But the market is going to be reflecting, of course, how many shares are basically outstanding in part of the calculation. So let's assume first we've got a stock split situation. So they decide they're going to do a stock split. Well, what would that happen? That would mean that all the shares that are outstanding, if we owned any shares, what we had before is now going to double in the number of shares. What does that mean on the on the corporation side of things? Well, that would mean the number of shares, if there was 100,000, would suddenly be 200,000. And then the other side that would change is just the par value would then generally go to one. And then the stock price, we would assume because the stock market is independent from the company, but we would assume once that the knowledge of that has been coming up because of the market, that the stock price would change to half of that to $6. So let's recreate this just so we can kind of see what would happen just to see the balance sheets kind of in the same uh, place in essence. Let's say this was a two, four, one stock split, and I'm just gonna recreate the balance sheet here. And let's make this a little bit wider up top, like right there. I'm gonna select these cells for the header, home tab, font group, making this black and white. And I'm just gonna basically copy the whole thing over. I'm gonna say this equals the assets. And I'm just gonna put my cursor on this top item and I'm gonna take the fill handle and go all the way down to the liabilities and equity. Now I don't have the formatting here. I'd like the formatting. So I'm going to take the, the whole thing again. And I'm just going to go to the to the home tab format painter brush and put that right on the total assets. So there we have it. Okay, so I'm just going to recreate this. I'm going to make this a little bit wider and then I'll go in and change just the equity just to get a feel for recreating. So I'm just going to pull over. I'm going to recalculate uh, the subtotals as we pull this over. And I'm gonna format it a little bit differently. I'm gonna put the assets on the on the inside here. So this is gonna be equal to the 35,000. I'm gonna copy that down to the fixed assets, put an underline here, font group underline, pull that to the outer column, equals the sum of the outer column. That's gonna be then the 1335. And then we've got the liabilities. I'll put that on the inner column equals the 298 enter put my cursor back on that fill handle drag it down i'm going to put an underline under the 50 font group underline total liabilities i'm going to pull to the outside here using the trusty sum sum it up por favor 
and then we've got the shares down below we're going to say we've got the shares are going to be equal to the 100,000. I'm going to put my cursor on that, drag it down for the par value two. And I'm going to calculate that right out here, subcategory right up on the side as we did. So 100 times the two, that's going to be us the common stock, 200,000. And then we've got the capital in excess of par, which is just going to be the 100,000, the retained earnings, which is going to be the same at the 687. Let's put an underline here, font group underline, and then I'll sum this up equals the SUM of the equity, and that's going to be the uh, 987, and then liabilities and equity is this number, and this number equals the 348 plus this number here, and enter. So let's put, we can put the double underlines here. I'm holding down control and here, font group, double underlines. So there we have it. And so let's select this whole thing. I'm gonna select this whole thing and make it border blue. Font group, border, bucket, drop down. There's the blue I typically use. I'm gonna to go to the more colors and go to the standard and there's the blue. Okay, so the only thing that's gonna change here then is we're gonna take these these items right here and I'm gonna make that yellow. And I'm just gonna say what really happens on the company side of things. Well, there's gonna be two, a stock split was this times two, and then the par value, we're gonna drop down to one. So now that's really the only change, right? We're, we're basically in the same spot as we were for before, but now we've got this uh, 200,000 shares that are now outstanding. So you can see, the, the bottom line is if they sold the stock, then you would have an impact because cash would have gone up, in, for example. But here, all they did was basically sp split the stock, no real impact on the rest of the balance sheet. What would be the stock price? If we looked at the stock price uh, calculation, we would assume the market would take that into consideration. But again, it would be dependent on the market, home tab, font group, uh, black and white we would say so prior prior price was 12 and we would assume that the split two for one a two for one split would mean that the new price according the market would most likely determine the new price to be the six percent right or six dollars six dollars put an underline here font group let's put an underline and let's make this uh, bucket uh, blue and border. So that would be the general uh, idea. So if we, for example, had one stock that we invested in before the split and it was valued at $12, now we would have two stocks at the $6, meaning our investment should basically be in the same spot. Uh, we can also calculate our, our percentage of ownership because remember our percent ownership will, will kind of measure how much control we have over what the corporation does. I won't get into that right now, but we should come up with basically the same percentage ownership as well. But for now, I want to compare it to like a stock dividend. So let's make a skinny H column. I'm going to put my cursor on the D. We're going to go to the, the format painter, paintbrush it and go to the H and let's just recreate this again. So I'm going to say this is the stock dividend uh dividend and it's a 10 percent i'm going to say 0.1 let's put the 0.1 like over here 0.1 or 10 percent home tab number group percentify i'm going to make this a little bit larger so we could see what's happening i'm going to make these cells uh, uh black and white again let's make them black and white and so this time i'm going to hide these items and i'm just going to recreate our balance sheet again so i'm going to put my cursor on skinny d go, go on over to g skinny d to g and then right click and hide those cells okay so we're just going to recreate this i'm going to say this equals the assets enter put my cursor back on that fill handle all the way down so it copies that stuff over and then i want to copy the formatting too so i'm going to select this whole thing right here we're just going to select that whole thing and I'm gonna to go to the home tab format painter and format paint here. So that looks good. And then 
I will pull in the numbers. So this is gonna be equal to, same stuff again, we're just gonna say this equals to 35,000. Gonna put my cursor on that, fill handle, drag it down to the fixed assets, put an underline under the 890 home tab, font group underline, sum it up in the outer column, equals the SUM in the outer column. Liabilities are gonna be equal to the 298. Put my cursor back on it, fill handle, drag it down, underline under the 50,000. Home tab, font group, underline, summon it up in the outer column, equals the SUM, shift nine, the 50, the 298,000. And then on the equity side of things, our focus is down here. This is gonna be the shares. This is our starting point, which I'm just gonna re-input, and then we'll change it. This equals the 100,000 times the two. There's our starting point. And we said the par, the capital in excess of par and the retained earnings. That's our starting point. Let's put some underline there. And let's put a sum here equals the S to the U to the M. Sum. And then we'll say this equals the liabilities plus the equity. And so there we have it. Let's put a double underline there and there. We're in balance in balance just like just like my whole uh my practice here we're totally in balance and so i'm gonna then say it's like my yoga workout or something it's totally in balance let's make this let's make this blue and blue and bordered home tab font group bordered and then blue and so then our focus is going to be down here in this area now it's going to change a little bit more significantly let's go to the font group and let's put some yellow here and let's do some sub calculations and tr try to understand okay what's going to happen if we give out a 10 percent dividend so now we're giving a stock dividend not a cash dividend so we're actually giving out value we're giving out value therefore we would expect the retained earnings to go down because normally you give out a cash dividend retained earnings goes down and then cash would go down right but now we're given a stock dividend, but it still has value. So the retained earnings would go down, but now the numbers of shares that are outstanding are gonna go up. So how's that gonna work? So let's let's try to figure this out. We'll say, let's make a skinny L column. I'm gonna go to the skinny column here, which I think is an H. So skinny, I can't even tell what it is anymore. You gotta, you gotta lay off the diet here. It's, you're so skinny, I can't even tell what you are. So there's the skinny L. This is gonna be the number, I'm gonna say this is a number of new shares. Let's make this a little bit larger. And so let's make this black and white. We'll do a sub calculation font group, paint and make it black and white. So we got, we got number of shares outstanding. So we've got starting, starting, uh, shares was the 100,000. Don't pull it from here because we're going to change this. I'm going to pull it from here it was the 100,000 shares. And then we said there was a the dividend dividend uh, percent. Let's say let's call it a stock dividend percent. And that's going to be equal to I said the 10% up top. Let's make that a percentage number, percentage so we can recognize font group. Let's put an underline. And so that means we've got the number of new shares that are going out are going to be the 100,000 shares outstanding that we're holding on to some of these. And then we've got times 10%. So now there's going to be 10,000 new shares that are going to be issued out there. So let's make this blue and bordered font group border and then blue okay so then the number of common stocks that are going to be out there so what are going to be the new new total common stocks that are out there selecting these two we're going to go to the font group bucket make this black and white we're going to say that we've got number of shares outstanding before starting shares, let's say, are 100,000, and then the new shares are 10,000, 
So the number of shares outstanding after the stock dividend are going to be the the new total total common stock, which is equal to the sum of these two. We got the one hundred and ten thousand. Let's make those blue and border. I'm going to say font group border and then blue on those. So then we could say, okay, well, what's going to be the the common stock value? Remember, we break out the value between the kind of like the investment on the common stock and then the retained earnings component. Uh, so we're going to say, let's look at the common stock, common stock value using the par value uh, calculation. It's going to be these two font group bucket. It's going to be black and white. So we're going to say this is going to be then number of common shares after the dividends, which is equal to the 110,000 and then the par value, which is still $2, $2, put an underline here, font group and underline. And so then that's going to be the new, let's say, Let's, let's call this new common stock new that's going to be the new common stock value which is going to be this times this new common stock value and so let's put a blue and border that one border bucket and blue and so then so then we're going to have the capital in excess of power calculation so that's going to be this number here. So we're going to say this is going to be the capital in excess of par. Let's make some black and white font group making this black and white. So let's take the market price stock market price, which is $12. That's the value that we think we're giving out on the stock because that's the current market price minus the par value that we're accounting for up top which is equal to $2. And so the difference is going to be the, let's just call it the difference, is going to be equal to 12 minus two. And then the number of shares, number of new shares, we determined to be up here, 10,000 equals 10,000. So then let's put an underline, font group underline. That's going to give us then our increase in capital increase in capital in excess of par and that's going to be equal to the 10 times 10,000 and the original balance original balance was the 10,000 so that means the capital in excess of par is now going to be so I'm going to say this is, let's call it new, new capital in excess of par, new capital in excess of par is going to be equal to the sum of these two. Okay. So then, so then the retained earnings is the other side of the calculation. Let's make this blue and bordered. So we're going to say bordered and blue and then we'll go up to the to the retained earnings calculation so let's go to the side here we're going to say let's make a skinny o i'm going to get the skinny column here font and uh, paintbrush skinny o this is going to be the retained earnings and i'm going to make these three cells black and white font group making this black and white we're going to make this cell a little bit larger. Okay. The starting uh, retained earnings was equal to the amount here, the 687. And then we've got the, the change. We're going to calculate the, it's actually, let's actually put this on the outside. I'm going to say control X. I'm going to call this change in retain retained earnings colon 
and that's going to be the number of new shares, which is this number here, number of new shares times the market price, because that's the value that we're actually giving out $12, not in dollars, but in shares that we're giving to people. And so we're going to put an underline here, font group underline. And so then we're going to have the change in retained earnings. Let's just double click, get rid of the colon, which is going to be equal to the 10,000 times 12, 120 decrease in retained earnings. And that's going to give us our, let's say new retained earnings which will be equal to the prior retained earnings, 687,000 minus 120. So there we have it. Let's put some indentations here. We're gonna go to alignment and dent here, alignment and dent again. Let's put some border blue around this. We're gonna go to the borders, bucket drop down, and blue. Okay, so I know that was a lot to kind of look at, but let's see what actually happens to like the balance sheet then. So on the balance sheet, really you can think of it this way. This might be easier to kind of, you can say, okay, the retained earnings has to be going down by what we gave, which was the $12 times the $12 uh, times the 10,000 shares that we are giving out. So it's got to go down by that 120. That's why the retained earnings is now at the 567,000. So that's where we're at. Now, we, if it was just a cash dividend, we would have paid out cash of that amount. That would be the other side because we're out of balance now. But this time we have, to, we have to change something else in the equity section, which is why we did these calculations up top. So now the common uh, stock calculation is calculated at this 110 shares that are now outstanding. And the par value remains the same. So we're still at the 220 and the difference here has to go to the capital in excess of par, which we now are at the 200,000 there. And so that puts us back in balance. That's the general idea. Now let's unhide some cells here. I'm going to go from column C to column I, right click the selected area and unhide those cells. And so note when we looked at the stock split over here, we had no adjustment to the retained earnings because Although you're going to have more stocks, if you own stocks, if they're going to double, you didn't actually get any, any distribution from the company in value because basically we would expect that your stocks would double, but the price would, would be cut uh, in half. And therefore we only have the adjustment here, no, no adjustment to the retained earnings. Whereas when you have the stock dividend, there is an impact on the retained earnings because of course the, the idea there is that you're getting something of value, not cash in terms of a normal dividend, but a stock dividend, the stock that has value, which we assume to be because it was traded on the market, most likely at the $12. So we have this adjustment to the retained earnings and the other side of the adjustment, of course, had to be in the equity side of things to basically remain in balance because we didn't actually get uh, the cash. So those are the differences in, in, in essence, the calculation on the company side of things. And when we're seeing it on our side of things, when you're thinking stock split, that's why you're thinking, okay, no real underlying value change happened to the balance sheet here. And you would suspect I'd be in a similar kind of scenario. Although again, the market could change based on the stock split, whether or not the market thinks it was a, a good idea or bad idea, whether the price, for example, is in a more reasonable kind of kind of price level this would be kind of low you would think most of the time but that would be the general idea of the stock split whereas when you got the stock dividend you're receiving something of value in the form of dividends as opposed to cash something's being distributed from the company retained earnings going down on the company side of things